It's here, I'm finally playing old school. Ever since I played Trailblazer League, I have the itch to do it on the main game. I always hated the early game Iron Man as walking everywhere and having no teleports made it seem like such a drain. But now that I got a taste of late game Iron Man and how much fun it can be, I had the motivation to push through it. I don't have any specific goals for this account beyond experience all that I can from old school. I should note that this first episode is all post commentary. I wasn't with my usual setup when I made the account, so all the audio originally was from a webcam, which I'm sure you guys don't want to hear. A lot of the early game is just walking around and doing fetch quests, so I'm going to try and do them non-linearly. For example, with Rune Mysteries, you have to go Lumby, Wizard's Tower, Varrock, then back to the Wizard's Tower. Instead of completing it right away, I'll start it now, and by the time I need the quest done, I should have passed through those areas naturally enough times to get the quest done. Our first skilling goal is getting up to level 5 thieving. Quite a long skilling grind, I might add. This gives us the ability to steal cakes from a baker stall, which will be our main source of early game food as they heal 12 per cake. And there we are, level 5 thieving. Had to pick up some cabbages from the basement to heal because I didn't want to die to keep our hardcore status as long as we possibly could. So now that we're done, Cook's Assistant and Sheep Shears, we gotta go pick up our quest cape, right? Hardest uh, quest in the game done? The last thing we want to do before we leave Lumby is pick up 15 fire making and 15 fletching. There's a spawn of 4 regular logs on the roof of Lumby Castle. This means that we can skip the process of cutting all of the logs. Just pick up the 4 and hop to a new world. Huh. That took a lot longer than I anticipated. I forgot how slow low level fletching is. It was about 60 logs for fire making and 280 for fletching, but we picked up a ton of longbows which we can sell to the general store. At selling 10 per world, we were able to get our cash deck up to 2.5k GP, which is more than enough to buy a steel axe from Bob. On our way to Artie to thieve those cakes, we decided to do Witch's Potion in Remington for some free magic experience. Getting closer to 13 for Fire Strike is pretty important early game, as most of our DPS will come from magic when we are starting out. There's a relatively new update where there is a boat in Remington that takes you to Artie for 30 GP, so no more dealing with charter ships or walking through Karamja to get to Artie. Once we got to Artie, we finished up the Monk's Friends quest, which got us 2k woodcutting experience and level 13 woodcutting. That's why we weren't worried about the chopping of the logs before and just picking them up in Lumbridge Castles, as we got most of the way to 15 to go and do oak logs right away, but we'll have to cut about 10 to 20 regular logs first. It's time to get fat with some cakes. Uh, we're gonna thieve cakes all the way up to level 20 thieving, at which point we're gonna swap over to silk to get us some GP. And at 25 thieving, we now have the ability to steal from fruit stalls, which should be a good way to train our thieving from now on. And we have about 150 silk and 150 cakes in the bank that should tide us over. Each one of these silk is worth 60 GP each. So sitting right there is 9k extra GP that we can get once we wait the 30 to 60 minutes for the silk trader to forget who we are. Time to go grind out 50 fire making. And about four hours later, we're approaching level 50 fire making here, which unlocks Winter Todd, one of the most important early game places for Iron Man. But we're not going to go right away. We have a ton of quests that we want to do. And most of all, we want to make sure we have a player owned house and get our construction level up a little bit to help boost the skill with Winter Todd. Before we left Artie, we sold our silk and picked up over 10k cash. That's nice to look at. Arguably one of the more beneficial early game quests is Sea Slug, gets you all the way from level 1 to level 24 fishing, and there was no fishing requirement in it, so it's just perfect. There's a really convenient spawn of regular planks at the Barbarian Assault area. We hopped through the worlds and looted about 250 of them to boost those early construction levels up. Also, while we were there, we made sure to do the Barbarian Assault tutorial so we can do the minigame teleport, and we went through the starting stages of the Waterfall quest, uh, just while we're here, might as well. Next up, we trained our agility up to level 10 at the Gnome Stronghold course. Once we get to level 10, we can quest and train the skill in other ways, so we don't need to worry about laps for a long time after that. And there we are, level 10. This will help out our run energy restoration a little bit, but not too much. Plague City complete, another skill starter quest. This one gets us from level 1 mining up to 15, and also the ability to teleport to Artie once we get 51 magic, which won't be for quite a while, so hold your horses. Seems like we're starting every skill with a quest, and this one is crafting. Not sure why Murder Mystery gives such a weird XP number, but I'll take it and 12 crafting. Fishing Contest is a much lower priority quest, but it's kind of like, you know, I was in the area, so I did the quest for you, thanks for the fishing XP. 
But with that done, I think we're done with what we want to get done on this side of the map. So I guess we're going to Varrock. The Chronicle, which we picked up while we were in Draenor, teleports us to the Champions Guild. So until we get Varric teleport with magic, this is probably our best way to get to this side of the map, and we'll be continually buying charges in Draenor as we need them. First thing we did when we got to Varric was pick up some runes and a fire staff, spending that hard-earned silk money. These runes should last us through training our magic up to 13, and any sort of quest bosses that we run into before Wintertod, to make sure we complete our Iron Man series episode 1 bingo, we're going to complete the natural history quiz. Runelight gives you the answers, it's so crazy. This gets you 9 Hunter and 9 Slayer with 1k XP each. Why bother training skills when they are level 1 when you can do all this crap? Make that the 11th skill we started with the quest. Gertrude's cat is done and we got up to 11 cooking. And also we got a kitten out of it. This is going to be an important thing for us, as each kitten we grow we can turn into a citizen in West Arty for 200 death runes, and we want to get a large stack of them to help out with Ivan's Blast in the future for Barrows, Questing, all that sort of early mid-game stuff, and we can buy a new kitten from Gertrude for 100 coins each, so essentially we're trading 100 coins for 200 death runes instead of spending 100 coins on one death rune. We had some time to burn while waiting for our home teleport to be back up, still have 14 minutes on it, so I went ahead and got 13 magic off imps. Unfortunately we ended up only getting white beads and can't complete the imp catcher quest yet. Rune mystery is done, our randomly running around the map seems to have worked. Dark's quest has some of the best dialogue in the game, they break the fourth wall by basically making fun of the pure coincidence that me the player happened to have the exact item of your quest, insinuating that I used a guide. Druidic Ritual done. This is important because it allows us to make the Rejuvenation Potions at Wintertod for some very small amount of Herblore XP, but most importantly more points in the crates, which means more resources we get in the end, which means more XP in all the Wintertod skills. While in the area we completed Witch's House, this does increase our HP levels, so we start taking 2s at Wintertod instead of 1s by staying at 10 HP, but as our fire making level gets up there we will start to get hit 1s again, as the higher fire making level reduces the amount of damage you take. And this just gives us more leeway to take damage without dying, and while I don't have aspirations of getting very far with the hardcore status, I'd like to at least get through Wintertod. Restless Ghost done gets us up to level 9 prayer. Not much use for it right now, but it's free combat level, so I'll take it. Knight Sword complete, 29 smithing. <laughs> I love this quest. With all our walking around, we visited all the pubs from the bar crawl. This means we can turn it in at the Barbarian Outpost to get the ability to destroy vials when finishing potions, which is really nice. And we also get access to the Barbarian Agility course, which I think is a diary requirement for the Candorin mediums, uh, but we wouldn't otherwise train there as there are better ways with all the rooftop courses that exist now. Jungle Potion done, and that got us up to level 9 Herblore. We still need to get to level 10 in order to be able to do the Dig Site quest, which we really want to do before Wintertod, but I have a plan to get that with another quest. While on Karamja, we headed down to the Karambwanji fishing spot. This is stackable raw food, which means that it makes feeding cats very easy. And I don't need to worry about leaving inventory space for food for the cat while at Wintertoad, increasing our efficiency with our fire making experience. I ended up picking up about 500, which should more than last me throughout the Wintertoad grind. Back in the Varrock area, and it was time to do the Stronghold of Security. With 25 HP, I was a lot more comfortable getting to the third level to claim the 10k. I didn't bother going to the bottom floor to get the boots as they'll be outclassed very quickly. This money will be spent on some more fire strike casts as we have some combat related quest boss coming up, and we also want to complete the mini quest Daddy's Home which unlocks Mahogany Homes, gets us up to 8 construction and gives us a nice crate of materials. It costs about 4k GP in supplies from the construction shop, so this GP was well needed. The steel bars from this crate of materials is going to be extremely useful next episode. We also own a house now, so we can get construction experience from Wintertod. X marks the spot was our plan to bridge the gap to 10 Herblore as we get a 500 XP lamp from this quest. We can put this in any skill and it's going right into Herblore. This is the quest that unlocks Zaya, so it's very important beyond the XP we're getting. We can also do the Client of Karen quest, which is just a massive fetch quest as we walk across half of the island getting signatures. But it's another XP lamp, which is also going to go into Herblore. We also picked up a favor certificate which gives us 20% favor in any house, and I decided on Piscarilius as it seems to be the worst one to start out, and everyone does it. 
Tourist Trap is done, and we get a pick from four skills, Fletching, Agility, Smithing, and Thieving to get XP in, and we're going right for Agility. This was the plan to get above 25 to be able to complete the Grand Tree without actually having to train the skill. With that out of the way, it's time to complete the Attack and Strength questline. Fight Arena done, 12k attack XP, one down, three to go. Next up is the True Gnome Village, and you can trap the boss against a tree and the West Arty Wall, and he can't hurt you because he tries to walk backwards, so it's an easy kill with Fire Strike. Once he's dealt with, that's 11k more attack XP. Grand Tree is the third quest in our little path, and luckily there's a safe spot to be able to kill this Black Demon, so we can just hang out by the rocks and once again lower him down with Fire Strike. Quest done, and this one is a big one as we get 18k attack XP and 8k agility XP, bringing up us up to level 33 in agility, and we've still only done those 14 laps. And the last quest in this little mini-series is Waterfall. We gain 14k strength and attack experience, bringing our final result up to 44 attack and 30 strength. Keep in mind when we started this little questline, we had basically 0 XP in these skills. Just so great to get through those early combat levels. With our herb lore now above 10, we went ahead and completed the dig site quest. This is another one of those skill starter quests as we get 15k mining XP. And if you add up our other mining quests that we've done, we're all the way up to 33 and we've barely mined any ores. Biohazard was the next quest on our docket. Don't gain too much XP from it, but it's the last requirement for the arty easy diary that we haven't completed yet. By entering the combat training camp, we've now completed the Arty Easy Diary. With that, we get the Arty Cloak 1, which gives us an unlimited teleport to the Candred Monastery, which is just so good. It's close to a fairy ring, close to a spirit tree, and close to Arty. On top of that, we get a 2.5k XP lamp in any skill above 30, which we're going to dump into agility because it's our only slow skill above 30 at the moment, and I can't be asked keeping this lamp forever. Next up was 25 construction. We want to get ourselves up to 25 in order to jumpstart our Winter Todd construction XP. The XP you get for repairing the brazier is four times your construction level. So getting from eight where we get 32 XP repair up to 25 where we would get 100 XP repair is so, so, so worth it. It's just gonna compound what level we leave Winter Todd at. There's this guy named Files who is outside the Remington portal. If you use noted planks on him, he's able to unnote them for a small fee. So we took our 250 planks that we looted earlier and got them all unnoted with him. The hardest part about construction on OSRS is getting used to the remove confirmation screen. On RS3 you're able to make that go away with a don't ask me again, but that's not possible on OSRS as it's part of the method of training construction, which was news to me. And 25 construction, that wasn't too bad. Finished off two of the Recipe for Disaster subquests that we could, the Dwarf and the Goblin Generals. This got us a couple levels in Farming and Slayer which we hadn't touched yet. The farming levels will help get us better seeds from our Winter Todd crates. But before we do commit to Winter Todd, I wanted to get up to 22 crafting to be able to make games necklaces. We have 5 gold bars from quests, so that's 40 teleports to Winter Todd, but I doubt we'll use all of them. I just can't be asked to walk there every single time I turn in a cat, it's just such XP waste. To get those cosmic runes to enchant the jewelry, we had to go to Mage Bank, which meant that we were going into the deep wilderness. I wasn't too worried because our combat level was so low, but if we happened to run into someone in our level range that wanted to attack us, we were almost assuredly dead. Luckily we made it there and picked up some runes and made the game necklaces. The very last thing we needed to do was pick up some Clue Hunter gear. You want to be wearing four pieces of warm clothing to reduce the amount of damage you take. We picked up the gloves and boots north of Artie. We already had a fire staff from all the fire striking we've been doing. And then the cloak we picked up south of Yano. It was time to spend 60 hours at Winter Todd. Winter Todd is just amazing for us as an early game Iron Man account, and I know everyone else does it right away, so if you have your Iron Man Episode 1 bingo going on, make sure to cross off the Winter Todd. It's very good for a multitude of reasons. You gain construction experience when you repair the brazier, which stacks up quite quickly, should end at like 40 to 45-ish construction. You get early fletching levels from turning the roots into kindling, so you don't need to worry about getting to 59 for a mithril grapple to get some of the medium diaries done as Winter Todd will just give it to you. You also pick up woodcutting experience from the Bruma roots, and most people end up in the 60s depending on how they do it, but again, you're skipping some low-level content that we won't need to worry about. 
And to top it all off, we get these supply crates at the end of each kill. These crates give resources in various categories from herbs to logs to fish to seeds to gems or to ores, and we also get some GP from it. These are based on the levels in those skills, so if we have a high mining level, we are more likely to get high level ores from the crates. This is why we did so many quests before this grind to help get us up to about 30 in each of the Winter Todd skills, um, so that way the crates we get are slightly better. But let's get burning. That did just not happen, holy crap. Casey, was it 92? And we get the pet, that's a 1 in 5k drop. But I think it goes by like the loot rolls, so it actually is like a 1 in 2k drop, because we get 2.5 per round. But damn, we're already getting spooned on this account. Um, We just got the Dragon Axe. <laughs> that is so stupid. Like first we get a 1 in 5k drop with the pet, now we get a 1 in 10k drop with the axe. Like, I, I, I don't even know what to say. This is actually pretty good for us. Because I will be doing a woodcutting grind before I get to the level where I'm able to safe spot Dagonoth Rex for a Dragon Axe. So I just upgraded from a Rune Axe to a Dragon Axe for that long woodcutting grind. Yes! And there it is, 99 of fire making, our first ever 99 on old school. Uh, for posterity's sake, let's just finish up this game. Um, but if we look at our other skills, we are up to 59 fletching as I stop fletching there. Our construction actually went up higher than I thought. We're up to 43 and actually pretty close to 44. Our wood cutting got all the way up to 66, which is really nice because we're going to have to cut some U logs pretty soon in order to get birdhouses uh, once we hit the correct level for that in Hunter. But yeah, this is basically Winter Todd done. I think we're about the 10,000th hardcore to survive this grind, so I'm quite impressed with myself, you know. Just the biggest PBMer, and I think this will be KC like 600. And there we are, game 599 done. So we're gonna be just under 600. Uh, let's see what kind of things we can get. This is basically like a pretty normal trip. We get a lot of seeds, resources, um, but let's go look what we have in the bank. So here are the main resources that we got. If we look, we got a lot of ores. A lot of early crafting gems, like that's 100 games necklaces if we want to, or 100 rings of recoils, which are going to be great late game. Um, we got a lot of fish, which means early game food is not really going to be a problem. As we all have, even if we burn half of these, we still have a couple hundred of each fish, and that'll get us through the early game. Then these logs are going to get us through all of our birdhouses up until the use, and once we get to use, we'll need to get like two to 3,000 of them. Um, so good thing we have the dragon axe for that. And then for the magic logs, we needed 12 for quests. So we got well more than that. And then the extra 50, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with, but they're probably going to sit in the bank. Uh, and then teak and mahogany for some early construction as well. And the herbs are another like real big part of this uh, because we got all these guams I can make into attack potions really easily get a lot of early starter experience and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get up to uh, I think it's 38 herb lore for prayer potions so we can turn these 26 renar weeds into 26 prayer potions because uh, that'll help us really a lot in the early game especially once we get up to 43 prayer for all the protection prayers so if we have any quests we can always make sure we have a prayer pot or two on us for emergencies. So in terms of our seed gain, we actually ended up getting a lot. We have all these tree seeds here from oak all the way to magics. And these magics are pretty special because they're the mist roll on one of the items. I believe it's if you have three bruma torches in the bank, any sort of extra bruma torches you get gets converted into a magic seed. So in total, we ended up with 14. And the same for the torstal seeds. And that's Winter Todd done and dusted. One episode down, 199 down. As this is the first episode in the series and the first video series that I'm releasing on Old School, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It really helps out in pushing the entire series to my audience. Stay tuned for next time when we go through the Winter Todd supplies and embark on what might be one of the longest grinds we do on this account at all. Have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.